Today we're going to talk about section 1-5 um, using problem solving strategies. So you should be able to answer the question, what strategies can I use when solving a problem by the time we get finished with the lesson? So you should have a few ways that you can um, start with solving problems in this class. So first, um, the first strategy that you can use is to look for a pattern. So it says, use the table below to write an equation for the height of a paramotorist h after t minutes. So the height is represented by the variable h, and t is the time or the minutes um, that he is up in the air. So we have a height of 2,000 feet after 0 minutes, um, 1750 after 1 minute, 1500 after 2 minutes, and so on. So first we need to look for some kind of a pattern. So I notice that it's going up by one minute each time. And I also notice that his height is decreasing after the amount of time. So he must be going down. Um, and it looks like it's going down by a certain number each time. It looks like it's going down by 250 feet each time. So that's a pretty steady decline. So first, we notice that the height decreases by 250 feet each minute. Okay, and we also notice that the initial height that he starts at is 2,000 feet. So we can use those values to write an equation. There's a shortcut way to do this. Um, we know that we started at 2,000 feet, and the height decreases by 250 feet times the number of minutes. So um, after 2 minutes, it's 250 feet per minute, so we take 250 times 2, and we started at 2,000. So the equation would be that I take 2,000, which is the initial value, and I subtract 250 feet for each minute, and remember t represents minutes in this case, that were in the air. So that would be our equation. So it's pretty simple, actually. Um, but the shortcut is you always put the initial value here, And then this is always um, the amount of change. So whether it's an increase or a decrease, the change goes in front of the variable and the initial value always goes here. And that's the pattern that you can use for these types of problems every single time. So it makes it actually pretty easy. All right, so um, it says, the Acela train travels between Boston and Washington, a distance of 457 miles. The trip takes 6.5 hours. What is the average speed? Well, um, there is um, a formula that we learned in the last section um, for distance, and it's relating distance, rate, and time, which is all the things that we have in this problem. So sometimes you just have to rely back on um, equations or formulas. So we can use this formula, distance equals rate times time, to find the answer. So we simply just plug in the number. So this strategy is using a formula. So we had looking for a pattern, now we're doing using a formula. So we know the distance is 457 miles. And it says, what is the average speed? So we really, we don't know our rate, so I'm just going to put R times the time. We know it takes six and a half hours. So here's our equation. We have one variable to solve for, so we really just need to get R by itself. So if I divide by 6.5, then you can take your calculator and you can divide this. So we need to take 457 divided by 6.5, and, and you get 70.3 about. So it's about 70.3, and if we look at our um, uh, values, we have miles and we have hours. So this would be in miles per hour, since we're talking about a rate or speed. Okay, let's look at one more. Um, we have these banners. You are hanging four championship banners on a wall in your school's gym. The banners are eight feet wide. The wall is only 62 feet long. 
There should be an equal amount of space between the ends of the wall and the banners and between each pair of banners. How far apart should the banners be placed? This is an excellent question and it's very real life. Um, and something, since I'm a very visual learner, another strategy you can use when solving problems is drawing a diagram. Uh, my husband and I were planting um, bushes in our landscaping in our backyard and we wanted to have the bushes equally spaced apart and we wanted equal space on the ends so that it looked nice and that they could grow you know next to each other and not overlap and so um, we had to do something like this too and I drew out a diagram of our backyard when I was doing it so we have four banners we know the wall is 62 feet long so we want to start there and we know that there should be the same amount of space between the ends and the banners themselves. So we can use any variable you want to represent that number of space. Um, and I'm going to use x. And we know the banners are, themselves are actually 8 feet wide. So if we draw a picture, it would look similar to this. So we have the wall is 62 feet. Each banner is 8 feet wide, so we kind of get an idea of what that looks like. And we want equal space between the banners themselves and actually at the ends, too. So now, using this diagram, let's try to write an equation to solve this. So I'm going to, I know the total that I have is 62 feet. So it has to equal something. And then I have x plus 8 plus x plus 8 plus x plus 8 plus x plus 8 plus x to equal the 62. So if I take 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, that would give me 32 feet right there. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. So 5x is what I'm trying to solve. So I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides, and I get 30 equals 5x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5 to solve for x, so x is 6 feet. So I know I need 6 feet from the end and 6 feet between each banner to make it work. Now in real life, it may not come out this pretty. You may not come out an exact number of feet. It's great if it does. Um, this is also great for like hanging pictures on the wall, I found. Um, so those are just some things that you can do to help you solve some real world problems. All right, make sure you guys write your summaries.